Hey, you guys. Welcome to episode three of Instill a Mother. How y'all week going? My week has been quite eventful, okay? I've been going out more than I've probably been out all year. <laughs> it's been quite eventful. If you listened to the last episode, then you know my birthday was on the 8th of July. Cancer baby. Woo -woo. And... I brought in my birthday in Houston. I really enjoyed myself, you guys. Like, it was a time. So, we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. The first segment, which is sweet and sour, y'all should already know. And if you are watching visually on YouTube, then make sure you leave a comment letting me know what was your sweet and your sour for the week. Let's go ahead and get into mine's. So as far as my suite, my suite was definitely Houston, y'all. So let me tell y'all, that whole Houston trip, I have it has never been a time in my life where I had a trip where everything was smooth selling. Everything was perfect. I mean, from travel, when we went to the airport, TSA lines were never long. It was nothing wrong with the flights. Everything was just perfect. No delays as far as getting there. And then when we got there, it was like, first, let me rewind. Pre prepping for the trip, everything was fine. Whether it was my hair, my nails, anything like that, my outfits, even packing, everything went smooth. I wasn't rushing. I had everything that I needed. And that is not common for me, y'all. Anytime I go somewhere, it's something that I forgot. I'm either rushing. I don't have enough room. I'm asking him, can he put something in his bag? So it's just the fact that I didn't have to do any of that. It was just amazing. And when we got there, everything was just perfect. So I rented out my dream car when we was in Houston. I rented out my dream car. And it was a 2022, which made it even so much better because it was brand new. And it just made me fall so much more in love with it. Even when we was there, even when we had to wait into lines for like to get into maybe a bar or a restaurant, we was not waiting in any lines longer than 10 to 15 minutes. Everything was just perfect. I really have no complaints. The hotel was cool. Like everything was just perfect. I was able to sleep in every single night. I mean, not every night, every day I was able to get up when I wanted to get up. It was no rush to do this, that, and the third. We was kind of just free willing it, you know? So it was just a great trip. I really enjoyed myself. I, I'm not sure if you heard of the podcast Poor Minds. So I listened to this podcast called Poor Minds. The two host names is Dre and Nicole and Lex P. And y'all, usually I don't go to concerts. I don't go to shows. That's not my thing. So... I really wanted to attend this one because it's a podcast. And as y'all know, I just started my podcast and they had a live show and it was in Houston right when we was going to be there. So I was like, you know what? Let's just go and enjoy ourselves. We got front. Seat. Well, we was in the second row. So we was very close and I wanted to be close because I'm like, OK, well, since I really don't do these type of things, I want to go all out. So we were close and it was funny. Like, it was funny. It was like, well, they're not comedians, but they had different, um, like, guests come there. So Nav Green came, which he is, like, so funny to me. If you have not, <laughs> if you don't know who that is, look him up on Instagram. They had Slim Thug there. I think that's his name. I want to say it's Slim Thug. If it's not, but I think it's Slim Thug, whoever used to date Latoya Luckett. He was there and they had different, they had Ken the Man there. So it was just, they had different guests and it was just really entertaining. Like them, 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 that audience was acting up, honey, but it was really nice. So that went cool. My kids still worried me to death. Okay. My 11 year old, he made sure he call me multiple times throughout the day. First of all, he called me every morning to say good morning. Okay, that's cool. Then he called me multiple times throughout the day. Then he called me to make sure every night he said good night. And even though at some points it was getting a little overwhelming because I'm like, Lordy, what do you want now? But it was like, he just, you know, like at one point we was at Prospect Park and I was in the middle of drinking and doing hookah. And he had FaceTimed me to say goodnight. And he was just like, Ma, enjoy yourself. I just wanted to tell you goodnight and that I love you. So that warmed my heart. 
So I was very much still being a mother all the way in Houston, even though the kids was not by me. Then here goes my seven-year-old. So he texted me and was like, Ma, can you please give me some McDonald's? First of all, my seven-year-old thinks that he's supposed to eat out every day. Okay, I don't know where he think money grows. And I know it's money. We say money don't grow on trees. And even though they're from trees, so they do grow on trees. But listen, baby, it don't grow like that in my pockets. But he thinks he's supposed to eat out every single day. But being that I was in Houston enjoying myself, I was like, you know what? I've been eating what I wanted to eat and enjoying good food. If he wants something out to eat, that's cool. The thing is, you with your daddy. So why is you calling me? So he with his dad. So then I'm asking him, like, Noel, what's the address? He don't know the address. He's telling me, just put in the street. They'll know how to get there. No, they won't. So I'm like, okay, well, let me call your dad. And when I talked to his dad, he was like, well, yeah, he did say he was hungry, but I was in the bathroom and he had to wait until I get out. Okay, cool. That's fine. So I'm like, well, is you going to order his food? No, I'm not paying those fees, but you want me to pay him. So I just went ahead and ordered it, y'all. And I got him his fries. And then, even though when, uh, when, I mean, not the fries, he wanted a 10-piece nugget meal. So when the meal came, they did not have the fries. So I had to contact DoorDash. And it was like, okay, we do apologize. Um, we're going to credit you back for the fries. And we're going to give you a $10 credit on top of that. So, y'all, I end up breaking even. I ain't even spend no money. So that was a win-win for me, honey. <laughs> um, other than that, so I've really enjoyed my time in Houston. Like, it was lit, lit. I have no complaints at all. Now, let's get into the sour. Y'all, Houston is so damn hot. Okay? Listen, by day two, I gave up alcohol and I gave up hookah. We only went to museums, parks, sightseeing. That's it. Because, baby, if hell feels anything like this, I can't do it. I cannot do it. I mean, it was so hot, you guys. The, it, the heat index every single day was 100 plus degrees. At one point, we had to wait in line for like 15 minutes to get into this restaurant called Taste. Y'all, that was the one day I wore a dress. Tell me why sweat was running down my leg. I'm not talking about beads of sweat. I'm talking about a, a river of sweat running down my legs. It was hot. That Texas heat is a different type of heat that I'm just like, baby, you cannot have no car where your air do not run because that heat is something else, okay? Like... I'm just so glad we didn't have to wait into lines or actually have any type of event that consisted of a, that consisted of us being outside because that heat was crazy. So speaking of quitting alcohol, let me go ahead and take a sip of my drink because I just definitely lied to y'all. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and get into the topics at hand, you guys. What prompted this episode was actually my trip to Houston. So when I was in Houston, now... Mind you, before I get into that, weight-wise, I am currently the heaviest that I have ever been in my life. I'm currently sitting at about 205 pounds, but even though I'm the heaviest I've ever been in my life, I feel the most confident that I have ever felt in my life. And the whole time I was in Houston, I just felt good in my outfits. And it's not like I was wearing stuff that was like, oh, let me wear loose clothing. No, I was very much wearing, you know, clothes that were fitted, clothes that showed skin. But I just felt good. I just felt so good. And it's crazy because I have been smaller than this before. But being that this is the heaviest that I have ever been and I felt the best that I have ever felt as far as like, um, not being insecure about my weight, that says a lot. Usually when I go on trips, I'm self-conscious about not wanting to wear something that's too tight, showing my gut, make sure I have my girdle on. And that's another thing, y'all. I didn't even wear my girdle. I brought my girdle and I didn't even wear it. It was too hot for that, okay? But I didn't even wear it. I didn't even feel the need to wear it. Like, I was Gucci. But... You know, usually when I go on trips, I'm always worried about something when it comes to my body, whether it's my stomach, my thick legs, because I have really thick legs. If y'all never seen my legs, I have really thick legs. I have really 
th- thick thighs. I have cankles. <laughs> I have hefty arms. And that is something that I used to always be so insecure about. Now, when I did lose weight, you know, of course that I felt better about my body image, but I feel like I was more so doing it just because of how I wanted to look and not how I actually felt. And that really goes into your own perception of your body. Like, I feel like that's why anorexia and things like that exist because people feel like that they still look fat and they don't in our eyes. I mean, it's all about perception. They might look skinny to us, but they look fat to themselves. So it's just all about how you perceive your body. And for the longest, I thought, have you ever seen something on um, Instagram where they be like, I be looking at pictures and think, oh, y'all, I'm sorry. Hold on. Wait, I want to tell y'all. So the necklace I have on, this is also part of the suite. The necklace I have on is from my dad. You can't really see it. if Well, if you're listen, listening, you can't see it at all. But it's a silver necklace with a silver heart. And in the inside, it has like a parent and child in gold. And what makes this so special is because not too long ago, I was actually thinking like my dad had bought me a necklace when I was a little girl that said daddy's little girl and I lost it. And I was saying to myself, not too long ago, maybe it was like a month ago. I was like, man, I wish I still had that necklace or that he would get me another one. And I didn't never say anything to him about it because I'm like, he ain't going to get my grown self a necklace, uh, you know, um, like a daddy's little girl necklace. But for my birthday, he got me this necklace. So I'm going to have to either lose some weight in my neck or get an extender because it is a little bit too short. I like my necklaces a little longer. Like if you're watching visually, you'll see how I keep going into the top of the um, my shirt. Other than that, I love it. So thank you, daddy. <laughs> okay, but back to the topic at hand. So when I usually when I go on trips, I'm always insecure about those things. And this time I was not at all. Now... Well, there was only one time that I was insecure about my body. And that's the day that we went to the Poor Minds. The day we went to the Poor Minds um, live show, y'all, I wore this shirt that said Body Tight Real. And I had cut it down the middle and tied it in the front. And, you know, I couldn't wear a bra with the shirt. So it wasn't my breasts that made me insecure. Okay? It wasn't my breasts. Even though my breasts were sweeping the floor, it was not my breasts. My titties was slipping and sliding because of that Texas heat, okay? So that's the only time I felt insecure the whole trip as far as what I was wearing on my body. Other than that, I was good. That's the only time that I felt insecure about my body was that point right there. And honestly, you guys, like, if you're watching visually, you really can't see what I have on, but I have a set on that's a two-piece set. And... I usually wouldn't even wear a, t- a, t- a set like this because it just showed too much skin for me. I've been going to the gym for years and I've never, ever, ever bought gym clothes because I always felt like, oh, I always wore like big shirts and tights because I just was insecure about my body. I just felt like if I would buy gym clothes, it would be clothes to wear I could wear when I'm smaller a size small, which I never got there clearly. So <laughs> I, I, they're still in my, they're still in my closet with tags on it. So even buying this set was something big for me because I don't buy gym clothes like this two piece set. And when I walk, my stomach start coming down a little bit and it's just that I bought three of these in different colors, honey. So it's just, it's all about perception how you perceive your body and honestly I may not ever be able to fit into those clothes and I'm not saying it because I can't lose weight I can lose weight it's just that with my body type I'm thick y'all like I have thick thighs I have a butt I have thick legs so it's like I might not ever be able to fit into no small legging like it just might not be possible so It took me a while to be able to accept that because I was so stuck on a small or so stuck on a number when really that does not matter. It doesn't matter. Honestly, it's like 
it just doesn't matter. I don't even like the fact of that when companies do like label certain um like Ashley Graham, they label her as a plus size model. And I'm like, she looks good. Why is she considered plus size? You know, I don't like that because it makes it like to society, it makes it seem like that it's different. Like being that size is supposed to be different um versus being smaller so it's like I feel like now we're coming around to where people of all sizes and shapes are you know starting to be accepted but even you know I be looking at these models that they consider plus size and I'm like well if they plus size what am I mega size because to me they're not plus size but again it's all about perception you know as you know you guys I had a child young I had a child at 16 so I never was able to experience my adult body like honestly never I never was able to experience my adult body without having stretch marks on my stomach having my belly button stretched out like it I never was able to experience that so instead of me appreciating my body, I always used to beat myself up because I'm like, man, I hate that I can't show my stomach. I hate that my arms are wiggly. I hate that I got bat wings on my arms. I hate that I got stretch marks on my, you know, just these different things. Like I used to talk so bad about my body or if I'm not actually verbalizing it, just emotionally feeling like, I don't like my body. I don't like this. I don't like that. And it it did more damage than it did good. Because honestly, all this time I've been feeling like that and I still haven't, you know, I'm not going to say I still haven't changed it because it did come a point where I lost weight. But even when I lost weight at that point, I still was not completely satisfied with the weight that I lost because I wanted to be 160 and I was 165. Like, who, who cares? Like, it's just... I feel like we get so caught up on this number and your size and different things like that, that it's just, it does more harm than it does good. And especially when you are a mother, you guys, like, I can't, like, our bodies are so special, you know? And it took me so long to realize that. It took me until after I had the twins to realize how special our bodies are. And I feel like the only reason why I realized that with the twins is because I'm like, man, like I literally carry two babies. Like I carry two babies inside of my stomach. Like just saying it out loud, that's crazy to me because, you know, I never even imagined myself carrying two babies, you know, and this woman out there to carry three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, the things that our bodies can do as women is amazing. And you, I promise I'm not a man basher. So everything I'm about to say, don't like, don't make it seem like I'm trying to bash men. Cause I'm not, I'm just trying to make a point. So it took for me to sit down and realize that when you lay down and you have sex with a man, the only thing a man has to do is release themselves and when they release themselves, it's millions of sperm going into a woman's body, right? And all it takes is one egg from the woman to connect with one sperm of a man, and it immediately forms a baby. And taking emotion out of it, just taking like, just taking emotion out of it, I'm just talking about the, the need of a man, a man can release themselves, a woman can get pregnant, and the man can walk away, and they're not needed anymore, okay, to, to form that baby, to any, like, they're just, uh, you can lay down and have sex with a man, they can release themselves, whoo, I'm done, all right, and then go on about their business, and then a woman can get pregnant, and that woman literally forms, a baby forms inside that woman's womb, I mean, the heart the lungs, the arms, the legs, the eyes, the eyelashes, the hair, kidney, the stomach, everything, form the toes, fingers, eyeballs, 
everything forms inside of that woman's body and we go through all of the emotions for that we go through nausea we go through being tired we stretch our body to its capacity we form stretch marks we experience things that we never had to deal with still to this day i still have to cross my legs whenever i'm sneezing if you a mom you know why so we experience so much and then we get to the point of where we push out a baby. We're literally giving life into the world. We're giving life into the world. And then let's talk about when it come down to feeding the baby. We literally can feed the baby from our bodies. And I know, you know, I've never breastfed. So I'm not bashing women that use formula because baby, listen, I understand. But when it come down to... um. Like, say, for instance, formula was not available. You could literally feed your baby from your body. And the man, for no part of that, is needed. So it just, to me, a woman's body is amazing. But yet we are so hard on ourselves. So hard. So hard. Like, immediately after we push out a baby, women are worried about getting their body back right. Right? Or... Oh, man, now I have stretch marks. I can't never show my stomach again. Or just different things that we, or we're trying to lose the baby weight or trying to get back to pre-baby weight. And I, I only can speak from experience because that was me. Y'all, I was literally ordering a J-Scott belt when I was laying on the bed, tending to two twins. I was still in the hospital ordering the J-Scott belt. Yep, that was me. <laughs> and it's like, I just don't understand why we do that to ourselves. Like, why? Why do we do that when our our body is literally, literally doing something, a woman's body that a man can never do? And not all of your insecurities come from a man, but I know there's women out there that is insecure because of how they might be perceived by a man. They might be perceived as big or out of shape or they don't want to show their stretch marks because they're ashamed of it. But yeah, you have men walking around here that look like they've been seven months pregnant for the past 10 years. So it's like, and and you, and it's no hate towards them. That's looked at as normal. Why? Because majority of the time you have men that's wearing loose clothing. They're not wearing the type of clothing that we're wearing, right? So they don't care. I feel like, and then not only that, when they do go to lose weight, I feel like it's so easy for a man to lose weight versus a woman. Literally, like my man be going to the gym and he'll be in the gym for literally two weeks. And now all of a sudden he got more muscles. And I be thinking like, man, you ain't got more muscles until I look at him. And I be like, yes, he do. And here I am two months and nothing. <laughs> but it's just, we just have it so hard we have it so hard and we're so hard on ourselves and before when I lost weight I was losing weight for my appearance I didn't care about necessarily being healthy I didn't care about you know the internal things I more so carry cared only about my appearance and that's why I gained the weight back <laughs> Because I literally lost weight for a trip. And once that trip was over, I just went back to my normal habits. So when it comes down to losing weight and, and things of that nature for a woman, it has to it has to run deeper than just you want to look better. It has to be something internal. And it has to also be more than you just want to appease a man or even the man that you with because it's been times to where no he isn't bashing me about my body but I would feel insecure laying next to him knowing that I had these stretch marks and this gut and all of these other things like yeah that happens and it's like I had to sit and ask myself why are you ashamed of something that a man could never do never it's just not physically possible. They can never do it. And on top of that, I feel like a man can never handle the things that we go through as women, even down to menstruals. We go through menstruals every single month. We literally bleed every single month. And they don't go through any of that, you know? And I know men, men go through their own problems that they go through. I understand that. And again, I'm not trying to bash men, but I'm just specifically trying to 
help another woman love themselves a little bit more when it comes down to their body and having a little bit more grace with themselves because we are so hard on ourselves and but our bodies do so much and it's sad it really is it's it's sad and I'm not saying go out here and be unhealthy because I'm still going to go to the gym. I'm still going to try to reach the goal of losing weight and, you know, just being more fit. But it's not just because of my appearance and it's damn sure not for nobody else. It's for me. It's something that I want to do. And it's, it's, I also had to learn to love myself at every single I had to learn how to love myself at every single point that my body was at every single pound, whether it was, I mean, I never reached 300 pounds, but I'm just saying like, whether it was 300 pounds or 120 pounds, it's like, it's important for you to love yourself at every single point that you're at on your journey, because keep putting that outfit off until you get skinny or keep putting this off until you get skinny. It's like, you might, you know what I'm saying? Never reach that point. What if you die tomorrow? You know? So it's like, I hope you don't die, but I'm just saying like, you know, just trying to, you know, create a reality for you. When it comes to a man versus a woman, it's like, they just can't do what we do physically. They just can't. And yet we have men out here making decisions on what a woman can and can't do when they can't even do what we do. But that's a whole nother story within itself or a whole nother conversation, rather. I'm not here to talk about that today. So I just wanted to make that point as far as, you know, if you are, um, whether you are a man judging a woman on how they look or whether you're a woman trying to look good for a man, just keep that into your mind of that a man physically cannot do what you're doing. They just can't. So don't beat yourself up because like I said, (laughs) You have men out here that ain't push out near a baby, but look like they pregnant, okay? So, no. <laughs> Wherever you live at, when you go outside, what do you see? And I'm not talking about on social media. I'm talking about outside. When you go outside in your everyday life, what do you see? For me, when I go outside and I'm just going to normal places here and there, most of the time, nobody even bats an eye on my weight or how I look or anything like that. Um, I just look normal. And most of the time, if you do see somebody that's, like, fit and in shape, you look at them and be like, damn, like, they really in shape. Why? Because it's not normal. If it was, I mean, not, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say it's not normal. It's not commonly seen. If it was commonly seen, you would just look at it and be like, oh, I see that all the time, Right. But when we go on social media, we always are seeing women that is fit body crazy, right? So we look at it as if we're doing something wrong. I can have somebody that's smaller than me that thinks I'm fat, but I could also have somebody bigger than me that thinks I'm small. So it's all about perception. It's all about how someone else perceives you and how you perceive yourself. So that's why it's important to just for yourself. What do you feel like? Like if you want to lose weight, okay, that's fine. You can, you don't want to lose weight. Do it for yourself though. Don't do it for anybody else. Do it for yourself. Because if you're constantly trying to please other people, you're constantly always going to be let down. And if you're constantly comparing yourself to other people, you're constantly always going to feel like that somebody else is doing better or looking better than you. Because let me tell you, George Chavez body. Every time I see her body, I be like, what am I doing wrong? Like she, her body is just crazy, but it's just, It's like, that's what I mean when I say social media. Social media will literally have you looking at yourself like, I'm doing something wrong in life. When you're not, just look at what's around you. Like, look at what's around you. That's not something that you see every day, right? And I'm not saying that don't try to go strive for that. That's not what I'm saying. But all I'm saying is don't beat yourself up because you seeing this and that and you think that that's the norm. You think that that's what you're supposed to have. What do you truly want? 
right? How do you want to look? How do you want to feel? Because for me, I don't want my breast slipping and sliding all over the place, baby. Because I can't stress enough how hot that Texas heat was. Like, that's something that I don't want for myself. Like, I don't like when I'm out and my rose is sweating. Like, I don't like that. But somebody else, they might not care. So it's like... If they don't care, but I care, it's just all about perception, right? So it's like, don't just, don't, don't just, just be more gentle. Be more gentle with yourself. When I go to the gym, you guys, most of the time, the people I see that is in shape is men or white women. And that really bothered me because I was like, it's not like I have never seen a fit woman in shape in the gym. I do, but it's just not as often. And that really bothered me because I just felt like women, black women especially, I just feel like we don't care so much about our health as men, um, well, gym men, because like I said, it still be men out here that look pregnant. But, you know, like men that's into the gym or white women, I do feel like that black women is not as normal that I see it, I don't know about where you live at, but I only could go by what I see. Again, it's all about perception. But I don't see it as much. So that's why it's important. Not that's why, because I want to be healthy and be in shape because I want to be healthy. But I can't sit up here and lie and say that it wouldn't matter to me being a fit black woman because it would, because it's not something that I often see. And I just want to show other people that it's possible. And especially mothers, it's possible to get your body back after you have a baby, but you can't beat yourself up because you did something that is just so amazing. You pushed out a whole nother human. I used to talk so bad about my body that I had to apologize to it. Like, I'm sorry. Like you literally did so much for me. You, you, I have four, you produce four humans, 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 four. <laughs> you literally moved me around. If it wasn't for my body, I wouldn't be able to do nothing. And here I am bashing you. So I'm sitting here talking to my body like it's an actual person, but it's like, that's exactly how, like, I felt bad for how I was treating my body because it's like I'm sitting here feeling ashamed instead of looking in the mirror and like, damn, like, girl, you look good. And like now I can look in the mirror and be like, I look good. OK, so it took me a long time to be able to look in the mirror, even look at my face. I never thought I was ugly. That's not what I'm saying. But just to be able to, I was ashamed of the decisions that I made in life. So to be able to look in my face and just stare at myself and just forgive myself, which I'm still working on forgiving myself, but just to be able to look in the mirror and admiration and look at my body and admiration. Like I literally can look at my body and be like, baby, you look good. Okay. Like you did that. You girl, you did that. Like that's how I had to act. When it came down to my body, because she did do that. She literally had four children and at one point carried two babies at one time. Y'all, like, she did that, okay? So, I just wanted to make this episode for all mothers out there, or just even women in general, because women in general have it hard. We go through so much hormones and you know, our hips spreading and just different things that a uh, man don't necessarily have to go through. I mean, men hips be spreading too, but you know, it's just, it's a little bit different. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, it's different than when it comes to a woman, we go through a lot. So if you're a mother out there, whether you're a new mom, a seasoned mom, a soon to be mom, I just want to let you know, girl, you look good. OK, you look good, baby. Keep up the good work. So now that I have expressed myself with all of that, I do before we get into the last segment, which is telling you guys a book that I read during the week that resonated with something that we're talking about in this episode. I do want to let y'all know a quick update about YouTube. So I did tell y'all that I made a separate YouTube channel for this podcast and still a mother. However, 
to be honest, you guys, I work really, really hard with getting myself monetized on all things that. So I am monetized there. And, you know, I do, I didn't want to start over with a new YouTube channel, especially since I have not even gotten that one established to the point that I want it to be at. And it's called All Things Yvette. So that's what it's going to be. All Things Yvette. So I am going to upload my podcast visual episodes there. So it's going to be up there every Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I hope that's okay with you guys. If you did go sus- if you did go subscribe to the Instill a Mother YouTube channel, I appreciate you. But you can unsubscribe or not. You can just leave it there. And then just make sure you're subscribed to All Things Yvette. Okay. So now that we got that out the way, I want to let y'all know what I read during this week that resonated with this episode. It is out of the same book, 101 ways, I mean, 101 essays that will make you think, but it definitely spoke to this episode. So let me just go to it. I have my iPad here. So this essay is called 101 things that are more important than what your body looks like. All right. And I'm not going to list the 101 things because that's just entirely too much. So I highlighted some specific things that I feel like that would go good with what we're talking about. The knowing that someone else's judgment of what your body is or isn't does not make it any more or less of that thing. The knowing that what we really need on a core level is the love and acceptance of other people unconditionally. Maybe not everybody, maybe not many people, but in principle by someone. Our ability to give that far outweighs how we look while giving it. That you can not only be okay with your body when it looks and feels the way that you want it to, that you find comfort in sometimes being very uncomfortable, and that you know it is not your responsibility to de- defer to anyone else's level of comfort or lack thereof. That some people can create another human life, if so they choose, that in itself is a freaking miracle. That you are able to evolve and change. That you have the ability to let go of your attachment to how you believe things should look and embrace them as they are. That beauty is not quantifiable. That you realize food is not the enemy. That you understand how contrived our idea of beauty is, how it has been engraved in our minds silently, in photos, in side comments, and expectations we learn from peers and mentors, unintentionally or not. That you never have to accept a narrow definition of what's beautiful. That it's only a very small people who feel the need to make comments about other people's appearance. That such an act comes from a very deep, very insecure place and is not someone you should get angry at, but show love to because they need it. That your body facilitates the things you love most in your life. Your legs let you travel and your arms hug the people you love. The understanding that the pursuit of physical beauty will eventually be futile. We all sag, wrinkle, and age the same in the end. The genuine understanding that most of the time you cannot equate your health to your appearance. That your body is not that your body is not for the consumption of others and that there is never a reason to do something to it that doesn't make you happy but will appease others. That you are not at fault for how society views physical appearances, but you do have a responsibility to yourself to defy it consciously. That you forgive the people who are cruel to you over your body and realize that they are hurting somewhere too. And that people only ever lash out at what strikes a chord within them. And that you forgive yourself for being cruel to yourself over your body. So... Like I said, y'all, I did not read all of the of, of the um, bullet points in that essay, but I just highlighted specific ones that I felt like resonated or could resonate with y'all. So that's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will see you guys next Friday.